If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, hello again. Normally, I do down-to-earth tech reviews. Not today. Let's crack on. We know WWDC as the event where every year we get to learn about Apple software refresh. For 2021, Apple have just confirmed today that they will be holding the event from the 7th to the 11th of June in an all online format. They will be sharing with us the future of iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS and tvOS. There's a lot of OS's. Sure, all of this is exciting depending on the Apple product that you own or you're looking to buy. I'm super excited about the iPadOS for example because that's for me the product that I'm looking forward to the most. As I've discussed that in my video last week, I, I really want to see the iPad Pro this year. But what I'm really excited about is Apple Glasses. But there's no mention of Apple Glasses, Alex. What are you talking about? That's right, they didn't mention it. And I could be stretching here, guys, but the first thing I saw, and some of my friends on Twitter as well, was that potential Easter egg here by Apple. But Alex, they've used glasses in their WWDC material before. Yeah, sure, but this time, it's not that subtle. At least I don't think it is. There's something about it. It's right in the center of the picture. They're kind of using the Greg meme from when they launched a product, the first M1 chip MacBook. So I think it's a big hint. Could be nothing, of course, but I think there's something there. If you look into the detail, they have cool reflections on them too. And it's very basic, but it's showing a calendar app, which is the sort of thing you'd expect from a first gen product. You get your calendar events and you get your calls and messaging notifications, things like that. But why is the Apple Glass so exciting? I've been very vocal in recent months in my podcast or as a guest in live streams. And every time someone asks me, what am I excited about in the world of tech? My answer has been consistently, augmented reality. That merging of the physical and virtual world really get me excited. If you haven't seen it, Marquez, otherwise known as MKBHD, interviewed Mark Zuckerberg at the end of last year, here on YouTube as well, and AR was clearly an area of focus for Facebook, as I'm sure it is for Apple and Google, Amazon. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that these glowing rectangles, these things that we own, are going to be around for some time. They're not going away anytime soon, but eventually this form factor that we know and love and that Steve Jobs himself introduced to us all those years ago, will have to come to an end. This form factor, this, the way we use these devices is not that natural. Having something on your face isn't that natural either, but it makes a lot more sense to me. And I'm not talking dystopian science fiction here, like Black Mirror just yet, but glasses, some of us wear glasses all their lives. I've got these things since I was a teenager. Some of us will wear some, some like this, like a fashion accessory. But sure, Alex, Google Glass, failed. Why would Apple Glass succeed? Well, I think there are a couple of things to consider here. One is relevance. When Google Glass was launched, it felt like a trial or, or a beta test of some sort, you know, without much consideration for things like privacy, for example. I would be very surprised if Apple make the same mistake. I think there's enough appetite and available useful information out there and network speed, for example, that would make such a product more relevant for today. When it comes to security and privacy, Apple are pretty hot on those things, as I'm sure you'll be aware of the recent history, fights with the government and allowing people access to their code. You know, they're really hot on security. The other consideration is aesthetics. If you remember the Google Glass, it was a perfect geek thing. It had a style, just not the style that people would want unless you're a geek. Not gonna lie, at the time I was very skint and I couldn't afford it anyway. It was like 2,500 pounds they were asking for, but I would have got it, not gonna lie. But I probably sit more in the geek category than in the general consumer. With Apple, you can bear your bottom dollar or is it top dollar? Let's go with bottom dollar. Basically, you can guarantee that when Apple launches their version of the glass, it will be something that the majority of people will want to wear. What I'm really excited about is the practical use cases and the possibilities it opens. Let's have some fun. Let's do some crazy thinking here. Let's imagine a HUD display, a heads-up display, with the help of 5G, whenever that gets here in the UK. But hypothetically speaking, whether you're driving or walking, I can see the glasses helping you with navigation, speed and traffic information, all those basic things that you'd, you'd imagine. But the key for me is without disruptions. Think about how many car accidents could be avoided because people are no longer texting or TikToking whilst they're driving. Definitely never done that before. You can interact with the virtual world without disrupting your attention to the physical world. And for me, that's key. Also, let's imagine what that heads up display could do for the retail and shopping experience. At a quick glance, uh, an elegant notification of some sort, you could see in the high street products that you are interested in. Not something that's available for everybody, but something that is truly personalized 
for you based on your preferences or history or the things that Apple or, or the shops will know about you. But Alex, we already have that. Sure, but at the moment it requires Bluetooth and signing to apps and the glasses could make this frictionless. I hate that word, but you know what I mean easy and imagine what it could do for entertainment. I'm really stretching here now but I like the idea that you could go to a stadium for example or a concert and imagine having you know see the players the ability to see the players names and their stats while sitting in the cheap seats. That's where I normally sit. With the small pair of glasses you could be having access to a ton of information right there on demand. I can see you interacting with it and asking questions for example or doing gestures to move things around and interacting with the live concert or the live play having access to that information in front of you, the possibilities are endless. And, and I, I'm really honestly excited about this. But what are the potential pitfalls? With any new tech, there's always a risk and privacy has got to be the main risk, I think. As I mentioned before, that was one of the key reasons why it failed for Google. So I'm hoping Apple learned from that and are not gonna make the same mistake. It was really bad. I don't know if you guys remember, people were recording stuff without people's permission through their glasses in, in public transport, for example. It was a nightmare, very quickly died, got a ton of bad press, it wasn't good. The other pitfall is customization or the ability to personalize it. We've been conditioned to love Apple products. They are known for their quality and fashion statement, for example, whatever it might be, the reason that you buy an Apple product. And you could argue that they have such a customer base that whatever they put out, people will buy. <laughs> Case in point, but I don't know. I hope they do allow people to customize the product so that you can easily interchange the lenses like for sunglasses or prescription lenses without having to have multiple glasses. There's a lot of potential revenue generating options here that I'm sure Timmy would not want to miss. He would want to capitalize on that. Personally, I'd like to get rid of two pairs of glasses. Sometimes you have three, depending on what you're doing, just in favor of one that I could easily interchange the lenses for. Right, this has been a very speculative video, I know, but if you are interested in tech, not just about Apple, by the way, I cover lots of different technologies here, then join me in my YouTube journey. There's a bunch of cool content already on the channel and I'll be doing lots more. I'm having a lot of fun creating this content for you and don't forget to join my bell gang. Yep, it's a thing. Well, it's not really a thing, but I'm trying to make it a thing. Uh, if you comment down below, hashtag bell gang, you will be in my next video. I already have two people who have done this and I love them for it. Easy and Tom, you guys are the best. I'll see you and your lovely faces in the next one. Don't forget. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Hmm.